raise your hand, hey, can I get some help? So that way you don't have to like struggle by yourself and then. And based upon some other student questions, I'm sure there are a number of questions on Master Set 2. For those who don't check email, Master Set 2 right now is due on Thursday, not today. Did you use the surprise? Uh, I do send out through announcements. I almost didn't. I figured, well, people would just notice. But yeah, then I felt wiser. All right, so. There's some stuff I want to go over before I answer questions on Master Set 2. So are there questions on things not Master Set 2? So I believe we left off with box on ground, we'll do box on box on ground, and then that will translate I think, nicely into several of the master, master set two problems. Although I did not introduce it properly, probably this is box on box on ground. 
Those are not the same box, so we need to somehow label them. I'm just going to collectively call this box one and box two. If you're against numbers today, so box A, box B, and box two. Right. Okay. All right. The first thing when we're doing a force diagram is we will split them up so I got some room for writing. I got my box one, I got my box two, and I got my ground. Drop my checklist. F down. And we just start going through. Is there anything that we can get rid of? Friction. Uh, friction, is that what you said? Yes, because it's supposed to be level. If this were frictionless, nothing would be sliding if it truly is level. So friction gone. Other? Why can't we get rid of other? That, that's the one on the right. There's nothing like crazy going on. That's probably as good as anything else. Tension. Why can't we get rid of tension? All right, so we're just left with weight and normal force. Which, oh, spoiler. They are there. All right, so I, I feel that weight is the simplest one here. So let's just start with weight. Which, what is weight acting on and in which direction? All right, so we've got the direction there. Somebody, I've got two people pointing in the right direction. Is it down on the box and up on the ground? Yep. Down on box. Oops. Up in the wrong spot. Up on ground. A little W there. W there. Is that sufficient? Wouldn't there be weight from box two going up on box one as well? Or no. Weight is between the small object and the planet, or moon. So there is a gravitational pull between these, but it is so incredibly insignificant that we are going to ignore the gravitational pull between these. Because if we worried about that, we would never finish the problem. Is there another small object besides that first box? Box two. Yeah. So we got a pair between the box two and the ground as well. Now I have, there is a mistake here, or it's something that I would take off for if you put it down. It's not going to require you to erase anything. Uh, what's wrong though with what I have written? Weigh the same thing? I, I didn't give enough information for you to know. But odds are those weights are not the same. The only time that you would have the exact same symbol for two things is if the magnitudes are the same. And since we should assume they are not the same, we need to somehow differentiate that W from that W. Thus, the subscripts. Put a one there, a one there, a two there, a two there or A and B or whatever it's going to be. I just know that I've got one pair, there's going to be one pair between these and a different pair between those. And so they're going to have their own label. They're going to have a different label. Now, sort of addressing the other one about, if I talked about there's a gravitational force between one and two that we were ignoring. It is incredibly small force. Um, so if I'm standing on the table, the gravitational force between me and the table is gonna be on the order of probably 10 to the negative 10th. Uh, so we're on the order of 
10 billionths of a newton. Whereas the force between me and the ground is about a thousand newtons. So the small gravitational forces between the small objects, we should definitely ignore because they are so small compared to all the other forces. You're designing multi-million dollar equipment, you're ignoring that. The only people who care about those forces are the people who study gravitational forces. And the one example that I usually give was that there was some people doing gravitational studies in the basement of the physics building, and they were getting different results in the spring than they were in the fall. And they were trying to figure out why, and it came down to, in the spring it rained more, water soaked into the hill that was on the other side of the wall, because they were in the basement, on the other side of the wall, and the water in the hill was affecting their results. Those people care about the force between the two small objects. Pretty much, they're the only ones. All right, do I have any other small objects? And again, small compared to a planet or a moon. All right, so weight done. Normal force. What's a requirement for normal force to exist? Two objects touching. Do I have two objects touching? Yes. Which objects do I have touching? Two boxes. Okay. So which way is normal force going to act on box one? Down. Down. So normal force is pulling it down? Down. Yeah. Okay. What's normal force doing? Just when you draw the pair of normal forces, they're in opposite directions. That was, uh, sorry, they're away from each other as yeah. opposed to gravitational force, which are pointing towards each other. Yeah. Right now, there's a normal force acting on all of you from the chairs. What is that normal force doing to you? Okay. If that normal force were not there, what would happen to you? The normal force, if box two suddenly disappeared, box one is falling. So the normal force is keeping box one from falling. So I got this normal force acting upwards and pushing it down. Do I have anything else touching besides box one and box two? Box two and ground. Okay, so there's going to be a spare of normal forces there. Because if suddenly the ground came away, this would fall, so there's got to be something holding it up. Or trying to hold it up. All right. What about box one and ground? Why not? So one of the rookie mistakes is to have a normal force between things that aren't touching. They do have to touch. All right, questions here because we're about to use this and explain a few other things. All right, so yeah, it's simple box on box on ground. Uh, what sort of morph this into something else, a person standing on the scale on the ground. So a person on scale on the ground, so let me just draw the, the picture there. That's supposed to be the scale, and the person standing on it. This is, physics, from a physics point of view, this is the same thing. Box one is now a person, box two is the scale, and ground is still the ground. We do the force diagram. What's the force diagram look like? 
Yeah. So I got weight one down here. I'm just going to call this, I'm going to change it to P for person. Uh, I got normal force person there, normal force person here. I've uh, got weight of scale, weight of scale. And then I've got normal force on scale, normal force on ground. Uh, so, why some dust? So the only thing I've done differently is I just changed the subscripts to P and S instead of one and two, just to give it slightly more meaning. Questions about that force diagram right there? All right, so the question I ask, have you seen the video and you remember it, just relax for a second, give other people a chance, and then you can show off when no one else can get it. When I stand on the scale, what's the scale actually measure? Zero. Say it again. Zero. When I stand on a scale, what it says zero. Oh, no, never mind. I don't understand. No, when, I, when I step on a bathroom scale, what is it, what is it actually measuring? What was that name? Uh, I thought that your name. Uh, not measuring mass. Uh, technically, if you're measuring mass, you're using a balance, but uh, a scale measures a force. Would it be the weight pushing down on the scale? Look at the force diagram. Is the weight of the person acting on the scale? Got some nods there. Where, which of these forces is the weight of the person? I'm hearing various small words, and again, my hearing's not great enough to pick up on whispers. Why P? That's not a weight, though. That's a normal it's force. It's not oh. pushing down on the scale. What is it again? It's not pushing. The person's weight isn't pushing down on the scale. Absolutely. And going over to what Logan had said, what is the force the person exerts on the scale? Natural force. Say it again. Natural. Uh, the wrong, wrong word. Oh. Normal. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Normal. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why it still surprises me. Natural force is the most common misname of that that I've seen over the years. Uh, it is the normal force. The force that the person actually exerts on the scale is that normal force. That is what the scale measures. Now the question is, why do we say it's your weight? Well, if a person is in equilibrium, what does that mean? Pretty sure I wrote this on the board before. There are three things that equilibrium means. The total force acting on the object, the acceleration, of the force acting on the object and the change in object's velocity. What about them? I, I would contend yeah. no, but mathematically, I can see where you might get that wrong, but equal to what? So the total force is zero. So if a person is standing on a scale and is in equilibrium, well, I've got two forces acting on them. I've got a normal force and a weight. So if in equilibrium, if I just make up positive, yp minus wp equals zero, or the normal force that, that I'll be exerting on the scale is equal to the weight if he's in equilibrium. So if I stand on a scale, think of an analog scale where I've got the dial as opposed to the electronic ones. If I can step on an analog scale and bounce up and down on it, I'm not in equilibrium. And since I'm not in equilibrium, 
the normal force is not equal to the weight. And so the scale will be measuring, you know, past my weight and under my weight and past my weight and under my weight. It's going to quickly shift back and forth. So if in equilibrium, the total force has to be zero. If not in equal, such as the lab we did on Thursday, if it's not in equilibrium, they're not the same. Now I put up on the board the most important equation in physics, in my opinion. This is the total force, even though I didn't write total, it's, it is the total force is equal to mass times acceleration. That's why if this is equal to zero, acceleration is equal to zero. If I have up as positive, I have yp minus wp is equal to ma, looking up as one dimensional problem. If my normal force is bigger than my weight, is my acceleration positive or negative? Normal force is bigger than weight. So if this is 300, so if this is 1500 newtons minus 1000 newtons, I'm going to get a negative number. So that would be my mass times my excel, whatever my acceleration is. My mass is roughly 100 kilograms. So I would, my acceleration would be five meters per second squared, positive five meters per second squared. That's positive up. So what does positive acceleration mean? And this is jumping a little bit into chapter three, but what does positive acceleration mean? Well, here's sort of, uh, a quick and dirty. If accel uh, 